Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Thursday. Here we are in the Atlantic looking at first tropical storm Dawn over here north of the Yucatan got named yesterday after the recon went in and found tropical storm force winds and a pressure of 1,001 millibars. Strengthened pretty nice yesterday morning actually. During the rest of the day it struggled over here near the northern Yucatan probably due to its proximity to the coast. There is some cold shelf water that is semi-permanently along the northern Yucatan in the summer and that may have contributed to allowing the convection to suffer and there's some, been some dry air entrainment from the west as long as well as the wind shear that we talked about yesterday out of the northeast that made the system struggle yesterday and was not able to strengthen a whole lot. In fact the recon plane just got in this morning and is now reporting a pressure of 1002 millibars so a s slightly higher pressure than yesterday morning and indicating that the system has not strengthened all that much. However, there is a new burst of convection firing here near the end of the loop, just on the southeast side of the surface center, which is right here, not under the convection, but it is uh, getting closer as the convection tries to get closer over the center. So we may see a little bit more of recovery today as the system moves away from land towards the west-northwest. Notice again here, it's hard because the sun is just now coming up, and the farther west the storm gets, the later the sun comes up when I do these updates, so it's harder to see the visible imagery. But the surface flow is again more northwesterly here at the surface, trying to pull the surface center out from under the convection and bringing it up here, which is another reason why it's continuing to have trouble developing under the convection and keeps trying to get pulled out to the north. There is also this upper level winds coming out of the northeast that is pushing the convection off to the south of the center, which as I mentioned yesterday will probably be the case right up until landfall. You'll see convection stay south and southwest of the surface center all the way on its journey into Texas over here. And if we look at the water vapor over here, we can see that there's still this big ridge rotating clockwise over the eastern United States, again bringing more of a westerly to west-northwesterly flow across the Gulf of Mexico, which is directing the mid-levels towards, towards more southern Texas here, as opposed to the surface flow, which is trying to pull it up towards southwest Louisiana and Galveston. As I mentioned yesterday, the key to where the system will go and which flow it will follow is whether it strengthens or tries to fall apart and dissipates or stays extremely weak. Now yesterday morning it did strengthen a little bit and it got a lot deeper and now has a strong presence at the 500 millibar level which is in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. So the system so far looks like it's going to continue following the track that I outlined yesterday towards southern Texas. In fact, if we look at the model runs, notice that yesterday we had a spread all the way up to here uh, near the Texas, Galveston, and southwest Louisiana area, but now we have them all bunched up more in line with what my track was yesterday between Corpus Christi and Brownsville. Brownsville being here, Corpus being here. And now most of the models, including this orange line being the NHC track, are now more in line with that. So that is increasing my confidence in this forecast, and I will continue to stick with that. Given the shape of the coastline, the trajectory that is coming in here, I would expect the center to be closer to Corpus Christi than to Brownsville. Brownsville, because to get it into Brownsville at this kind of a coastline angle is kind of difficult. It is more likely to be right in this big bend area. I forget whether you guys call this the big bend in Texas. I'm used to that being referring to the Florida panhandle bend here, but this bend in the coastline here is probably where we're going to see dawn come right in. Of course, things like that can change. We could still tweak it and come a little bit farther north if the center does continue to get pulled out to the northwest by the surface flow. However, it looks like this will hold together just enough to make it through the mid-level flow towards southern Texas, and that's what my forecast is going to stay as for now. If we go back to the water vapor, there's this upper low that is backing northwest away from dawn over here, and ordinarily this is fairly favorable. This is allowing a little bit of outflow to get on on the western side. However, this pressing flow out of the northeast from this ridge is not allowing it to do a whole lot, and it's not able to breathe, so to speak, very well right now. And this ridge will be continuing to build... Oh, excuse my mouse here. This ridge is going to continue to build a little bit farther west now as dawn moves inland 
towards Texas. It'll build in really strong behind Dawn, pushing it west-northwest and also keeping this strong easterly flow aloft over it, which is going to limit its intensification. As I noted yesterday, there are several issues that it's going to have to deal with, both the shear and there's also this dry air in the western gulf in its way. And if we look again at a sounding this time in the northwestern Yucatan from this morning, again, the red line is the temperature sounding, the green line is the dew point. When they're separated, there is dry air. If we notice that there is large separation in the mid-levels of the atmosphere right in here, this is indicating a very dry atmosphere around the northwestern Yucatan, indicating that dry air is probably getting wrapped around into the southwest and southern side of dawn circulation. And if we take a look at total precipitable water imagery, here comes dawn in the northwest Caribbean. Watch it as it comes and spins up northwest of the Yucatan. Here's this big batch of moisture showing up in green and blue colors. I'll let it play one more time. Here comes dawn coming northwest. Here's all this dry air getting wrapped in now to dawn circulation from the west and the southwest as he moves west-northwest. So these issues are now coming to fruition here. And we are seeing dawn get it limited because he hasn't strengthened a lot since last night. He is showing signs of being able to ramp up a little bit more today. Again, a moderate tropical storm at peak here I still believe is likely around 50 miles per hour or so. I could see 60 being possible if he gets some more thunderstorm activity over his center, but not much stronger than that is really going to be possible with the storm as it moves across the Gulf of Mexico. So not a huge deal with the winds, though of course, fo of course folks should still be prepared for gusty winds blowing, you know, loose things around the backyard and stuff. But rainfall is going to be the main deal with the system and hopefully will bring some much needed rain to the Texas area if this holds together. Right now we're more hoping that it holds together and brings the rain more than we are worried about it ramping up into a powerful hurricane. So hopefully folks get some much needed rain out of this. Switching gears for a second, we're going to leave Dawn for a second, although that will remain the priority for the next couple of days. We have a couple other things we're going to have to watch here, mainly this wave in the eastern Atlantic showing up with the circulation here more well defined than Don's wave was when he was out here in the eastern Atlantic and this is going to be moving west northwest towards the northern Antilles Islands over the next several days and this is our next feature that we're going to have to watch is the models hint that this may remain well defined and could have a chance of developing over the next several days and this is the Canadian forecast for day six here showing what could be near a hurricane near the northeastern Antilles Islands. Now the Canadian usually overdoes these things, so I'm only showing this as a reference because the Canadian's a good indicator of what the worst case scenario may be, but most of the models are hinting at the same general location with a storm possible in this area if the low pressure is able to develop. Right now it has a lot of dry air wrapped up with it, that's why there's not much convection, but this will be moving this way and could be another issue for this area of the world near the Caribbean islands, perhaps the Bahamas, and maybe even Florida eventually will have to watch this though we'll have to see because there could be a trough that might recurve it to the north but it's way far out right now we'll just keep a wary eye on that as soon as dawn leaves we will focus a little bit more on this feature as it gets closer to some land masses all right that's it for today thanks for watching